All right, everyone. This is uh, Rico back with uh, another video. And uh, what I usually do is uh, play games, but I figured I uh, I might as well explain my position here on as far as uh, uh, PC versus console. Uh, I have uh, recently defected to uh, to PC from console. I've been uh, uh, I've had a bit of a mixed history because uh, well, let's see. Uh, I started with uh, really Nintendo, the uh, NES. After that, uh, never really owned a Super Nintendo. Played it at uh, other people's houses, but uh, after that, it was like Sega Genesis. And then uh, after that, uh, I was on PC for a bit. Uh, you know, uh, Genesis was still uh, still the thing, uh, but uh, uh, but uh, let's see. I was just playing Doom, and then from there, it was uh, uh, Rainbow Six, Half Life. Uh, and that's that's what got me through college mainly. It's a uh, uh, PC. I never really got into uh, uh, so I kind of drifted off on consoles. Uh, after I graduated college in uh, 2004, that's when I started going back to consoles. With uh, I bought a PlayStation 2, and it's uh, in the late stages of its life, and had a lot of fun with uh, with that. Uh, and then eventually my brother visited me and uh, uh, brought his 360 and brought Rainbow Six, which, of course, uh, I loved since I remember from PC I played Rainbow Six, uh, the original, and Rainbow Six Rogue Spear, the sequel, uh, and the expansions to both games, because I, uh, I owned both games with both expansions and uh, uh, loved them. So I was uh, eager to, to see what uh, what they were doing on uh, on the 360, and I loved uh, what they did with the game, it uh, it looked beautifully. It controlled very well. Uh, they got rid of the the whole planning stage, but uh, but what they you know what they gave us back was uh, was you know uh, a map that was live and uh, a, a cover mechanic, which was very interesting. And so uh, I found that fun, and the game looked good. And so I I went to 360, and that was really my main uh, gaming rig for a very very long time. Uh, from there, and so with that, I emigrated to Xbox One as soon as it became available, and that was a pretty hard pill to swallow because I got in early. Uh, I paid the uh, I think it was uh, the full five hundred dollars for the uh, the Connect uh, bundled uh, uh, Xbox because you couldn't buy one without the the Connect at that time. Uh, I did get a day one version. I went to to the mall to go pick it up, and uh, and. I, I liked the console. I really liked the, uh, the the features, but those early months were really hard because game wise, it was you know it was it was really barren. Uh, uh, I'm big into shooters, and so I know I wanted a shooter. And at the time, I was done with Call of Duty. I thought it had gotten uh, mediocre and stale at the time. Uh, so I was getting ready to maybe get Battlefield, but I had heard so much bad press about Battlefield uh, Three. I think it was that was out at the time. That uh, that I just went with Call of Duty Ghosts, and so I I got that instead because I needed a shooter, and one didn't. The the console, as expensive as it was, didn't come with a game, so uh, so I I got that, and I also got uh, uh, what's this uh, Roman game, Rise, Son of Rome, uh, and so you know I enjoyed those games, and I enjoyed other games that came afterward, but it seemed to me like without reverse compatibility. Uh, and with games being what they are, where they were being more digital and less uh, uh, disc-centric than with the used market, you know, getting smaller and smaller and with uh, digital games not getting any better, it just seemed to me like things were only going to remain expensive for me if I kept going with Xbox One. And it would only break my heart down the line when uh, when Xbox goes to the next console and then abandons uh, Xbox One games because they weren't going to be reverse compatible, just like the 360 games were not compatible for the Xbox One. At the time, there was no reverse compatibility uh, from the Xbox One. Now that they've uh, announced reverse compatibility, I did try that before I sold mine back. Uh, and so that's this is really what the story is about. I sold my Xbox One uh, and I, I've defected to, to PC. So reverse compatibility became a feature, but again, even that had the caveat of only certain games would be reverse compatible. Uh, Hardware-wise, software-wise, everything was in place, but without the permission of the developers, the uh, the publishers of the game, the game wouldn't be reverse compatible. So it was just a matter of someone saying yay or nay, and the ones who said nay were obviously you know, wanting you to buy uh, that version of the game all over again, even though you already owned the disc for a previous system. So it just... It did. It rang false for me. It didn't. It was a hard pill to swallow, and I decided I'm getting out. Uh, I'm not doing the reverse compatibility uh, game anymore, and so you know, I'm not doing that little dance. And so, uh, 
I thought about it for a while, and I was like, if I could go to PC, that might be the best option. Uh, I took a look at uh, at Steam during the holidays, and uh, I just fell in love with the sales that I was seeing. I was seeing whole bundles of of things that uh, uh, you know that are available, and so it was just a matter of could I live with gaming on a PC? Is that something that I could get used to? Um, uh, like I said, I've been on PC before. Uh, I never really liked keyboard and mouse, but you know it was something that I did before, and I know that. Uh, controllers are available for for PC, and that uh, uh, you know they work for the most part. I did get a Steam controller, uh, and I do love it. Uh, I don't love it as much as my 360 controller, but it's a nice option. It's infinitely tweakable, uh, and I can you know reprogram and remap the buttons as as I would want for every game. There are recommendations for each one. In fact, why don't I pop over and just show you those real quick? Uh, I may have to plug in the controller. I don't have it plugged in right now because I don't think it'll show unless I plug it in. Let's take a look. Right, so you can tweak, you know, the uh, the buttons to do whatever you like. But even if you don't have to start from scratch, you can uh, browse configs, and uh, there are recommendations. There is a community. So if there's someone who's been using uh, a setup for a while and it becomes popular, it's used by 24 people or whatever, it, it becomes listed here. And so you could actually, I can click on this and then look at it and say, yes, I'd like to use this, or I'd like to use this and then tweak it a little. That's an option. And so that's, it's just, you know, it's uh, infinitely flexible uh, and it's a controller. So I don't have to deal with uh, the, you know, the keyboard and mouse. Although I've, you know, I've heard, you know, all the ups and the downs that, you know, keyboard and mouse is really the, you know, the mouse is infinitely more accurate than uh, a joystick or a uh, a touchpad like the Steam controller has. But, you know, the adjustment period did exist, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't prohibitive. Uh, and so getting over that hurdle, I've decided, all right, I'll stick with uh, PC. For for one, uh, games availability is, is rarely an issue, and that's really going to be the, the main focus of this video is uh, that's why I've got these listed. This is my library of Xbox One and 360 games. And so uh, I'm going to try to go down the list and just see, like, you know, which ones of these games do I miss? And of the ones that I miss, are they exclusive or are they available on PC? Uh, and I suspect and believe that most of them are. Um, and when I do look for them on PC, what happens is you look at the, the, the stores. On Steam, games are relative like just the base price tends to be uh, uh cheaper than you would find at other stores or it's exactly the same price uh and often steam will have sales where it's you know the sales are uh, uh are extreme and uh to the point where i think i bought doom 3 uh for four dollars i bought bioshock uh one two and three for like seven dollars altogether and, you know, you see these little sales, m minus 15% off, 33% uh, off, 50% uh, off. And so, you know, you can get, you know, I don't know what this game is, uh, Ben and Ed for five bucks. And so if that's your cup of tea, you can have that. Uh, Black Mesa, which as I understand it is like a, an HD remake of, uh, of Half-Life for $20. And so, you know, the 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 price is right and sometimes it's even better uh alien versus predator which came out i think was it uh 2012 you know, let's not guess maybe it's in the description but yeah that's me so uh 2010 so this game is 6 years old and it's down to $15 uh, and if that's your cup of tea, I'm not really big on uh, on horror games, but, uh, you know, there it is. And so you've got one place where you can download it, install it, uh, and if, you know, if you like, there is a community. You can share your screenshots and videos, and uh, uh, you can view those of the community, and uh, there's news and guides. And so it's, it you know, inside big picture mode, it's almost like a console experience. So, you know... After a little bit of adaption, I've I really don't miss my Xbox much. What I do miss 
is uh, the voice commands from the Connect. And I know that, you know, a lot of people feel like the Connect was too expensive, it was nearly useless, but I'll tell you, those voice commands really did the trick, where I'm on Netflix, I'm watching uh, a movie or a TV show, I want to go to the kitchen to get something to eat, or I need to use the bathroom, and I just stand up, and as I'm walking out, I say, Xbox, pause, and pauses. Uh, and uh, say, I'm coming back from the kitchen, I got food in my hands, a tray of food in my hands, and I just sit down and say, Xbox, play. And then the, the movie resumes. So that's one thing that I miss. And I may be able to replicate that on PC. Uh, you know, it's got, you know, voice commands. So can I find an app that will uh, do that? Or can I use uh, uh, speech recognition to do it? Maybe. That's something I can play around with. But that is something that came with the Xbox One out of the box and uh, and that I miss. So let me get out of pig, big picture mode and get back to the main reason for this video. So... So let's just go through it. So let me go ahead and hit view all for my Xbox One games. And while I'm waiting for that page to load, the first two that are listed here are Killer Instinct, which uh, which was free on Xbox One, yay, uh, and it is available for PC. I actually already have it here on my PC. And it's my understanding it runs the same way, and I am able to use my a Xbox 360 controller with... Uh, uh, no problems. It's uh, controller supported. Nothing, no problem there. Uh, Thief, which I rented once, and I think I downloaded for free when it became available on uh, uh, Games with Gold. Uh, loved it. Didn't, don't miss it. So I'm not sure if uh, uh, if I will buy it again, or if you know the price becomes cheap enough that I'll buy it again. I did try it and liked it, but not to the point that I want to own it. But it's available on PC. Uh, Numa, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, is it, you know, but I got, again, free with Games with Gold, uh, played it, thought it was interesting, very good looking, don't know if I ever want to play it again. Apparently, I downloaded the ride demo, but I don't, I don't ever remember playing that, and so, yeah, I, you know, if it is on PC, I don't know. Uh, Love, uh, Walking Dead, uh first season, and so I will look to see if, if maybe this is available on PC, or maybe, you know, I think it's free on Android phones anyway, so I may just play it there if if I miss it down the line. Uh, Scream Ride, didn't get, didn't understand it. Dying Light, don't like horror games, but I did like the, you know, the bits and pieces that I played, but that was when the sun was up. I can't imagine how scary that game becomes once the sun sets. Uh, Forza 6, the, uh, the demo looked great. I assume it's available on on PC, but that's that's something we can look up. I'm not too big on racing games, so I'm not sure if it's not available. If uh, if I care, or the six on PC. Not sure why it says beta. And it brought me to the store. the The Windows Store is, uh, you know, you know, like the Android uh, Play Store and like the uh, the iPhone App Store, is useful in that it's and it's a nice place to go to one stop shop. But f with Windows, uh, it's a little sparse. It's uh, it's 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 almost curated. So this app is free, but it says Apex. I don't know if this is the actual game or some sort of companion app. Reintroduction to Mo Forza Motorsport requires PC built for gaming. Please click more below. So I guess this is the game, uh, Apex, and so that's actually available for free, and I can download it right now. So, you know, there you go. Battlefront. All right, here's what I need to say about Battlefront. You know, I, I mean, I'm not here to critique the games at all, but uh, I rented it and. Uh, loved it. I was a big fan. PlayStation 2, uh, Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2. I own them both. Uh, and then when I got the 360, I loved those games so much that I bought them for, they were also available for original Xbox, and those games did run on the 360, so I loved playing them there also. Uh, not an option with, uh, with Xbox One, and so uh, I was itching for it, and so uh, while I still had my Xbox One, I did rent it. Uh, and loved it for the gameplay, for the sound, for the visuals. Uh, but I was very disappointed with the 
uh, the maps. It's my understanding there were only four, uh, uh, four planets, and uh, and and that's it. And so the you know four planets, maybe eight maps, uh, and that's it. No story mode, no campaign, nothing. And even in the Battlefront games, it was really you know it was skirmish skirmish warfare. Uh, but at least there was like a cutscene before and and after each scene, you know, explaining what the uh, uh, the stormtroopers were doing and what the plan was. So there was like a progression uh, of story, especially in uh, Battlefront Two, where in the middle of the mission your objectives would change. Battlefront One, it was merely, uh, you know, uh, command and you know conquer, control, capture a, a point and you know keep it. Uh, but uh, but let's move on. Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, played well. I had fun with it. Uh, I I tried the beta and I liked it. Don't know if I wanted to own the game. Uh, I might, you know, I might buy it down the line. I'm a big fan of the uh, the Rainbow Six franchise, uh, and I pretty much love everything that they do. That said, I don't know that the game is worth a whole sixty dollars. Again, it is available for PC, uh, and. It's probably available on Steam. I think I've seen it. Rainbow Six. I don't know how to spell Siege, but there it is. I don't know why it doesn't bother remembering my birthday, but all right. So here it is, and it is. What's this? Starter edition, fifteen bucks. I don't even know what that means, but let's find out. Uh, so the full game is fifty bucks. So that's ten dollars less than what you would pay uh, brand new at a store. Uh, and then when they have a sale, it'll be even uh, cheaper. The gold edition is seventy nine ninety nine, so that's eighty dollars. Not sure what comes in that. What's in this starter uh, uh, package? Starter Edition provides full access to Rainbow Six Siege game for a reduced price with a different system for unlocking operations. Click the link. Hopefully it's pretty simple, but look at that. I mean, it's not a demo. A demo would be nice, but for you know for fifteen dollars, if you can get if you can get on that starter kit and, and assuming that it's enough for you, it, from the description, I assume that it's a, it'll be like micro transact micro transactions and things that you'll have to uh, unlock for for different prices. Which after you do all that purchasing is probably going to end up being fifty bucks. But if you can live with what they what they offer you to start with, then you know why why pay more? Uh, more information on Fantasy Siege Starter Edition. What is it? Provides full access to Rainbow Six Siege game for. 1199 system unboxing operation see below instantly unlocks up to four characters requires additional grinding to unlock remaining 16 operators what content is available all modes multiplayer terrorist hunt situations all operations all 11 maps all game modes all weapons full progression same servers etc what content is not available since starter edition is the full game you have to you have access to all the content however the operators will require more grinding to unlock than is required in the start so that's it i mean that's not much of a limitation i mean i don't know how much extra grinding you have to do but i mean look at that that i'm uh, just describing it i might be tempted to buy this game right now for $15 it's the full game, and the only limitation is that each operator, these are different characters that you can unlock inside the game, uh, they only become available through grinding anyway. Uh, like, in the game, you have to earn these renown points that you can use to unlock different characters. Uh, if you get the starter edition instead, you have to do additional grinding to... I don't know if they give you fewer renown points, or if there's going to be a second currency that you'll have to grind to get, but... Who cares? You've got the full game for fifteen dollars. You've just got fewer characters to uh, to go with. And now here's the issue: this is a multiplayer-only kind of game. You can play solo, but it's mostly uh, terrorist hunt. Um, no, that's that's all it is. It's terrorist hunt. Anything else is uh, uh, is multiplayer. So there's that. And then there's situations which are almost scripted 
uh, scenes. There's no real cutscene in front or behind. They just give you a situation. They say, this is what you got to do. This is the situation. And, you know, go to it like a nom. So that's a nice little discovery there. $15. I would re- if, if it's your thing, I would recommend it. Right now, I'm going to save the cash and uh, pass on it. But that's, that's a wonderful little discovery right there. So, you know, we keep going down the list. Uh, Metal Gear... I've played 1, 2, 3, and 4, loved them. Ground Zeroes is a waste of money. Don't bother. Get Metal Gear Solid 5 if you like. Don't spoil it for me. I haven't played it, and I haven't uh, listened to any reviews on purpose because I don't want to ruin it for myself. Uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I've never been big on Assassin's Creed, but the game was free through uh, Xbox uh, uh, Live Games with Gold, and so I downloaded it played it. Uh, What little bit I played, I liked, but... uh, uh, but there it is, and I'm sure that uh, there are plenty of Assassin's Creed games that are available for PC. But let's confirm that. Like I said, I'm not missing it. It's not my cup of tea, but uh, Assassin's Creed PC. I'm not even sure if I spelled Assassin right. I didn't. Quadruple S is there. Director's Cut on Steam. Look at that. I don't even know why I'm Googling it. I could just go straight to Steam. Some of these, that's the downside to uh, to, to PC. Uh, you know, Steam is almost a one-stop shop. But uh, look at that. So the original Assassin's Creed for $20. And that's, some games, no matter how old they get, this is as low as they go. But, you know, you wait till Christmas or, or you know, eventually they'll have a, uh, a sale and they'll let you know about it. That's the other uh, nice option. So I can say... Community groups, manual, update history, share embed, flag. Where's the button for me to watch it? There's a button somewhere. I'm, I'm not seeing it. Community hub, but so that you can follow uh, this game, and so as soon like that you're interested, like add it to your wish list or something. And as soon as there is a sale, you get notified immediately, and so you can you know uh, buy the game from uh, from anywhere. So here's the other ones, uh, and you know you can take a peek. I'm sure. I think that was Black Flag right there. Yep. Uh, and so it's still twenty nine ninety nine. And so it's available. Now, if I wanted to buy this from Xbox, I'm sure it's it's either still sixty dollars or something comparable to that, uh, uh, or it might just be the same price. But at the same time, again, I could move from PC to PC and bring the games with me. Uh, Steam will hold on to stuff, so I can re-download my games. If I have discs, I can reinstall them on the new PC. PCs tend to uh, be a little bit more legacy friendly. I can, you know, I can through DOSBox, I can play, you know, old. You know the original Doom uh, games, which I do have and I do play, and so this is an option that just isn't available on Xbox One, uh, 360, uh, or even you know the the now announced Project Scorpio, and so that's why I've gotten out. Um, so let's let's go back to the list. I mean, do we really want to do the whole thing? Uh, Gears of War again; those games are available on PC. Uh, Halo; those are available on PC. Elite Dangerous, I assume was first on PC and then ported it over to Xbox One. Uh, played it for a little bit, kind of liked it, but I'm not too big on uh, 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 Space Sim, uh, although it's a nice franchise. Destiny was available on, on PC. Uh, Pool Nation and... Uh, what is it? Dark Dreams Don't Cry? Don't Die? Yeah, it's a stupid title. It's a kind of silly game, although I might have been interested to finish and see where that was going. Uh, but not missing either of these games. And so even if they're not on PC, there's, I'm sure, plenty of, you know, fun pool games that you could play and plenty of point-and-click games like uh, uh, Walking Dead, which uh, which were fun. So that's... Is that my whole library? No, I've got three, uh, three pages. I'll just run through real quick. So, I, you know, rather than explain each game, I'll just... I'll skip ahead. I'll just name... I'll just mention the name the, the the games that are on here that I might miss if they weren't on PC, but I suspect that they are. Limbo was fun, but I don't see myself playing that again. Um, uh, Vulgar, not sure if it's if if it's on PC or if it ever will be, but uh, that was a nice little uh, retro throwback. But it's not something that I you know I'm gonna hold on to my console for just because. Uh, that's true for all of these. 
ghost. Oh, uh, I did buy uh, uh, R. Lee Ermy's voice for uh, uh, for Call of Duty Ghosts. It's 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 awesome to you know be playing the game and just have him uh, yelling in your ear. Gonna have to call the boss at the office. Uh, so yeah, let me cut that off here. Hold on. So, as I was saying, love the gunny on Call of Duty Ghosts. Wonderful edition. Uh, Snoop Dogg was also available. Uh, I didn't buy that one, but that was an interesting touch. So, Call of Duty Ghosts actually ended up being a little bit more fun than uh, than I expected. The story was crap, uh, but uh, the the multiplayer was fun, and uh, I liked the uh, the option of adding uh, Captain Price as uh, as my avatar, as I did. Uh, Tomb Raider was a lot of fun, and uh, and I might want to buy that one again, and it is available for PC. Uh, Titanfall, I had a lot of fun with it. I would buy it for PC, but again, I'm not huge on multiplayer, and uh, that was a multiplayer-only uh, kind of game. They did eventually add, like, uh, Frontier Defense, uh, which I believe you could play solo, but I usually played it uh, online with uh, with four others, uh, or three others. If you tried to play it by yourself, it was nearly impossible. Your Titan can't uh, defend the uh, uh, the tower by itself, and you really need to uh, help out. Uh, the rest of this looks like it's DLC, and uh, I'll tell you what, Xbox Fitness, I only tried it for a couple of weeks. It was, uh, you know, it was pretty effective at, uh, at making me sweat, so that was actually uh, a major plus with, uh, with the Xbox and the Kinect. Uh, a lot of the programs were were free, or they had demos which were free, and then the programs themselves were uh, were pretty cheap. So if uh, if you're into fitness, you've got a living room large enough, and uh, uh, and you just you know need someone to to help you out, I would certainly recommend uh, uh, Xbox uh, Fitness. Uh, more than this, uh, for the 360, there was a I think there was it was it was a UFC game which uh, which was like a UFC trainer. Uh, for the 360 that also used the Kinect. And that was even better in that it would watch you and not only give you visual feedback on the screen, whether or not you were doing an exercise wrong, but the trainer himself, like, the, it had a dynamic voice that would change and say, oh, no, you know, uh, move higher or move uh, faster, or a, little, a little to the left or to the right. So there was, like, some dynamic instruction there if you were doing something wrong. And so I didn't see much of that in Xbox Fitness, but... Uh, that's that's certainly a plus. If the Kinect can look at you, see if you're doing something wrong, and then prompt you to do an exercise correctly, uh, that's that's certainly a motivator to uh, to exercise the right way. Uh, and uh, so that might be something that I miss from uh, uh, from the Xbox. Now, I did you know uh, join a gym and I've been going there regularly, so I don't really need that. So something that I you know I kind of miss, but I only really used it for. Uh, a couple of weeks, and so yeah, I guess not. But uh, certainly a plus, certainly a thumbs up if you were on the fence at all uh, and you just need something in your living room, you got a living room big enough, uh, and you need to do some exercise, and you need a little motivation, that's certainly a place to go. There's plenty of programs that are free, and then the, the ones that you have to pay for, there's like a demo for. So you can see if it's something that's for you, and then before you take the plunge, and then uh, purchase it and uh, uh, the the different programs. There's like P90X is one of them, and uh, uh, I'm sure Buns of Steel was another. I wasn't really paying attention to the titles, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's there for you. So that's that's all the Xbox One games, and no, you know, nothing stood out except for you know the Connect voice commands of something that I would uh, miss, uh, and something that I that is not available on PC for me. So. All that's all that's left now, really, is uh, is the 360. Now I had the 360 for much longer. I'm sure there's a lot more games on there, but again, I'll just I'll just breeze through and go over the ones that uh, that I liked and that I I would miss if it, they weren't on PC. Eventually, the game I mean, sorry, the page will load. I'll assume that these four or five are are the ones that are going to be at the top at the next page anyway. But uh, Crisis was uh, was was fun. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I ever got used to playing Crisis, but uh, that's available on PC. Metro's definitely available on PC. Uh, Army of Two, I'm not sure of, but it's a title I could live without. Had plenty of fun with uh, uh, Army of Two uh, uh, Part One. I'm not sure if uh, Devil's Cartel is uh, Part Two. Well, it, Army of Two. Yeah, I don't know if Devil's Cartel is a Part Two or Part Three. I've lost count at this point, but. Everything I've played of uh, Army of Two was uh, was certainly fun. Gears of War is fun, and it's available on PC. Uh, so is uh, Tomb Raider. Uh, the Witcher is, and uh, 
uh, I'm not sure about open world games. You know, it, 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 you know, it, the more I say I'm not sure about, I'm not, that's not really my bag. I realize, you know what? Uh, I'm just really narrowing it down. It's like I'm, I'm really like an action uh, first-person shooter kind of guy, but I, I do try to, you know, vary it up. Uh, what I have played of Witcher was, uh, was fun. It was like, uh, Dragon Age, or, uh, Origins, and, uh, uh, I would like to, you know, delve deeper in that, and I'm sure it's available for, uh, for PC. Uh, Defiance is on PC. It's free to play. I'm not sure if Tekken is. Uh, I loved Tekken Tag, uh, the, the first one on, uh, PlayStation 2. I uh, love that they made a sequel. Uh, again, not gonna miss it, uh, not gonna, you know, I'm not hurting for a fighting game. Killer Instincts is actually pretty good, but uh, I just noticed these little icons here. So these two games are reverse uh, uh, backwards compatible, which which is nice. Uh, Saints Row is fun, but not gonna miss. Bioshock I love and I own on PC. So uh, Bioshock one, two, and three, as I said, I bought them for seven dollars. Uh, the Mass Effect series is available on PC. The strange thing, though, I think. Uh, Mass Effects 1 and 2 are available in Steam, but 3 is only available through Origin, so I'd have to get that through EA's uh, website, but, you know, so it's it sucks that it'll be fragmented that I won't find uh, uh, Mass Effect 3 uh, among my library, although I can just link it, I can add the game from down here, so even if you buy a game not in Steam, you can add it to the library from uh, from here. Uh, now the controller integration may be may be mixed. If uh, if you're using the Steam controller, uh, the the game may or may not respond to your uh, key bindings. Now there is a workaround, uh, and uh, I have tried it, and it works for for really all games. If you've got a game, uh, you click on manage, and the the controller options aren't here because they're not. Uh, I don't have it plugged in, but if I did, you could uh, select your uh, different uh, key bindings and then adjust the controller from here. Now, if you do it from here and you do it for a Steam, a non-Steam game, and it's not working, it's not taking it in. I go into settings, go to controller, and then configuration, desktop configuration, and what it does is what you change, what what whatever profile you select here, it's the controller is just going to use whether it's for a game or anything else. So it's just like a universal set to say this is what I want to use. And so like when I want to play games on DOSBox, uh, which is you know not a Steam game, and also other games are going to be loaded inside DOSBox, uh, I switch the control scheme from here, and so I can browse configs, and I actually have my own personalized. Uh, I think I've created one for for. Personal templates, other games. Haven't saved any. What? Sometimes this happens, and this is purely a PC thing. I might have to get out of big picture mode before this list will populate. Uh, but I've got uh, some DOSBox configurations for Descent and for Doom, uh, the original Doom. So that's that's always a uh, a plus and an option when uh, controlling games. Let me get out of big picture mode. And so that is Mass Effect 3, which is only available on Origin. So again, uh, I'm not going to have the uh, the nice prices of uh, Steam and the sales from Steam, but I'm sure Origin and EA have their own sales and, uh, and bundles that may be available. So when I do go to buy Mass Effect, and I will, uh, I haven't yet, but I will, uh, I would like to buy all three together in a bundle if I can. Uh, I'm not seeing a... Oh, here it is. So, page one of three. So, so far, no games that I, you know, that I can't live without that are not available uh, on Steam or or on PC generally. Uh, Spider-Man, I could live without. Black Ops Two was kind of fun, but I could live without. Uh, all of the Call of Duty games are available on Steam. Uh, they're they're all twenty dollars, no matter how old they are. But uh, if you wait for the holiday, I think I bought Call of Duty. Uh, part four for for ten dollars or fifteen dollars. Uh, Ace Combat, Gears of War, nothing I can't live without. Mortal Kombat X was fun. I believe that's available on PC, but let's take a look. Store. Do I know how to spell combat? Mortal Kombat X is available, and it is forty dollars. 
came out a little over a year ago, and it's forty bucks. Wait a little longer, it might be even cheaper. And uh, the the uh, let's see, for forty for ten dollars more, you get some stuff in this package, and so you can you know there's little options uh, uh, here that you can check out. So you get the combat pack. I don't know what comes in that. Uh, doesn't look like there's any savings because it's just another extra ten dollars. So yeah, you might have to do a little investigating to figure out what this stuff is and see if it's worth your while. A little bit of content. Da -da. Access to four upcoming playable characters, skin packs, slash. Yeah, that's not for me. But uh, Mortal Kombat again. I'm not. I'm not missing it. I'm not sure that I'll pay for it to play it again. Uh, sinking my teeth into Killer Instinct, and I'm okay with that. But uh, you know, Mortal Kombat has its own flair, so. Uh, if if I do end up missing it, I'll certainly you know put down maybe not fifty dollars, but uh, if I find it better on say you know I don't know something like good old games or somewhere else that might have it cheaper, fine. Uh, if there is a Steam sale, then I can certainly get it from uh, from there. I still can't find that follow button. Had your tags fighting Q. Use your queue. Follow. There it is. So if there is a uh, a sale on this game, I'll be notified immediately, and I can decide whether you know whether or not I want to buy it then. Uh, now, this is one thing you don't have to worry about on consoles that is crucial on PC, and it's this: uh, your uh, system requirements. You know, you look at the minimum and you make sure that you can match it. Uh, only supports 64-bit systems. That's you know, I got that. I got enough memory. Uh, GTX 460, so I'm good there. Uh, DirectX 11, I'm sure I'm up to date, so I can get this game no problem. But uh, every PC is different, and you got to make sure that you meet these minimum requirements. If you don't, uh, you can risk it. And that doesn't mean that the game won't run, it just won't run very well. And you have to decide whether or not you can live with that. I have downloaded uh, every website that I've consulted, and every manual that I've looked at, uh, confirms that my rig cannot or is not designed to play Doom 2016. I did download the demo, and I got it to work fine. Now, I did have to turn the resolution down, turn anti-aliasing off, turn motion blur off, and turn off all the frills, but it runs, uh, and it runs very smoothly. So it might be a game that I buy, and uh, and that's also available for uh, uh, console. Doom Nukem, Duke Nukem, I'm sorry, forever. Uh, glad I bought it, glad it finally came out. Uh, not something that I will ever uh, uh, miss or probably want to play again. So, uh, no dice there. Pac-Man is fun, but it's available on PC. Uh, Vegas 2 I haven't bought, and I may not, but Vegas 1 I certainly have bought and played on uh, on PC, and I think that's the third page, and that's everything. So those are all of the games on 360 and on Xbox One that I have purchased, liked, uh, and would like to play again, and all of them are available on PC. So it makes economical sense to just switch over to PC, because, at least for me, uh, as generations go on and on and on and on, uh, and as I move from PC to PC to PC, uh, assuming I keep all of my save games backed up and uh, in another location, then when my PC eventually dies, or if I upgrade to another one, all I really have to do is migrate those games over, and uh, and they'll be available for me. I can still play uh, those games, and so why I want to why would you want to tie yourself down to a console that yes is plug and play you turn it on you put in your game you stop thinking about it and you play your game uh and you've got a controller that works just as well and the game that's optimized for a controller uh with uh with you know uh auto uh aiming assists to help you out all of this is true for a console and so if that's your bag that's where you want to go but if the important thing to you is being able to play, getting a platform that will uh, will get enough games, because there are exclusives out there that will only go to PlayStation 4. Uh, there may be some that go to Xbox One only, uh, although really not. Generally, Microsoft puts out its games for PC as well. Uh, they made that pretty clear on uh, at E3 this year. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, if there is going to be a game that's going to come out and it's not going to be a Nintendo or PlayStation 4 exclusive, it's going to come out on PC. It's probably going to come out cheaper on PC, uh, and 
if not right away, uh, I mean, it, it, it's going to become cheaper sooner on PC. And so that's something you know to consider. And that's something that if you can, if you can adapt yourself to it, as I have, then there's no reason not to. And uh, that's that's my little spiel about uh, migrating over to PC from console. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can certainly uh, uh, leave them in the comments or uh, uh, send me a direct message on YouTube and uh, uh, just you know let me know your experiences. Uh, yay or nay? Uh, have I made a mistake? Did I get something wrong? Is, did I leave something out? Uh, let me know. I'd certainly love to uh, uh, give you guys an update if that's something you uh, need to require. Uh, anyway, take care, guys, and uh, God bless.